This is the Almanac, a dailyish dose of wonder for January 30th. The book, The Almanac, takes events that happen each day and makes them into creative prompts, inspiration, or sometimes just amusement, which is a word that has muse in it. So there's a relationship to creativity, too. There's a lot of birthdays today, so let's get started. First, it's the birthday of Franklin D. Roosevelt, and the daily soul vitamin comes from him. He said, Happiness lies in the joy of achievement and the thrill of creative effort. My commentary on that is there is an indication that effort is actually more important than achievement. There are studies that show kids rewarded for their effort actually do better and achieve better and are happier than those rewarded for achievement. Perseverance is cultivated in this way when we look at our effort and enjoy it. That inspires the question, what part of your creative effort, your pursuit, your passion, do you love the most? I'm giving you time to answer that. It's also the birthday of singer-songwriter Phil Collins, 1951. In the Almanac book, we routinely take song titles and make them inspiration for our own writing or art. So let's try that here. What might you write if the title of a poem or an essay were one of the following? Or a combination of the following? Or something you loosely associate with one of these titles? Ready? Only you know and I know. What creative thought comes up when you hear that? Other than the rest of the words to his song. One more night. Don't lose my number. And inside out. For instance, I chose Don't Lose My Number and my modified creative association to that title was Lose Your Number. Just as an exercise in wanting to mambo to the kitchen in the morning instead of complaining about your back, lose your number. Age is, after all, just a number. The real test is in believing. You are getting younger every day. That's a creative thought. You can get your life around. If you lose your number, you can find a rhythm that multiplies your joy and adds curiosity. Maybe it'll keep you amused one more night from the inside out. Today is also the birthday of Shirley Hazard, 1931, a novelist and short story writer. She has a quote that is the inspiration for today or tomorrow's journal writing. She said of writing, it's a nervous work. The state you need to write is the state that others are paying large sums to get rid of. Walk the plank. Here's what you can do with that. Choose an uncomfortable state you experience. And I don't know about you, but I'm experiencing some recently. And list its creative potential. Just make it up. It doesn't even have to make sense. Or get into an uncomfortable state and describe it like a real estate agent might. Or a chef. Or a tour guide. That's a different way to deal with the uncomfortable state. Lastly, but not leastly, this isn't in the book, but it was definitely a regretful oversight that it wasn't. It is the birthday of poet Richard Brodigan, 1935. He was an American novelist, poet, and short story writer. His work often clinically and surrealistically employs black comedy, parody, and satire, some of my favorite things, with emotionally blunt prose describing pastoral 
American life, intertwining it with technological process. He wrote many books, but Trout Fishing in America is one of his most famous. Here's a quote from him that inspired a prompt on Facebook. Sometimes life is merely a matter of coffee and whatever intimacy a cup of coffee affords. I asked my wise, creative, sometimes funny Facebook friends to fill in half of this sentence because they didn't know this was a Richard Brodigan quote. I put this unfinished sentence up. Sometimes life is merely a matter of and here's some of the answers I got. Vicki Scarlett Fisher said, Sometimes life is a matter of pudding. Simply a matter of pudding. Lori Miles said, Being grateful for the next breath. Alex Bosworth said, Sometimes life is merely a matter of leaving the seat clean. <laughs> Rosie Walker said, Having to figure out what to cook for dinner. Just the next thing. Melissa Glassford said, Sometimes life is a matter of listening to the voices in the wind. Sherry Phillips said, Sometimes it's a matter of just petting my cat. <coughs> Stephen Renault said, Sometimes it's just holding one's breath until the moment passes. Mark Morris said, it's a matter of persistence. I agree with that. Just Lipka said, Sometimes life is just a matter of chance mixture of amino acids. Very scientific. It's a miracle. Sometimes it's a matter of just letting a truck go by. Meredith Millen said, Sometimes it's a matter of seeing through and beyond. Lane Ryder said, sometimes life is just a matter of matter. I said, sometimes it's just a matter of what you choose to believe. Jennifer Johnson Crow said, it's a matter of acting on instinct. Linda Chapman said, sometimes life is just a matter of wearing elastic waistbands. Jeff Doucette said, just putting one foot in front of the other. Thank you for these profound and funny sayings. I'd like to leave you with this Richard Brodigan quote. He said, reduce intellectual and emotional noise until you arrive at the silence of yourself and listen to it. This has been Jill Badonsky and an almanac, a daily dose of wonder. You can find me on Instagram. These prompts come up on my personal Facebook page. Send me an invite. Also in the show notes, I'd like to highly recommend what's there. It's a link to a podcast called Be Bold, Begin. Christina Barcy is a Kaizen Muse creativity coach with all sorts of experience in the entertainment industry. And this is a podcast about how to turn fears of getting started into being in love with the process and how to keep going. She provides easy exercises and activities that can be done in the moment or are small steps toward your bigger goal. And... The link I've included is one where she's interviewed me and we had a really cool discussion about curiosity. So if you're into podcasts and into creativity, that's a good one to listen to. Thanks for listening to this one. Take care. Be safe. <laughs>